we're going to move straight on um, to Ken Calhoun. Ken, um, I hope you brought your soundboard today. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, Absolutely. <laughs> but in any case, uh, Ken um, runs a, a day trading university. Uh, he's been in the business for a long time. Very interesting talk uh, to listen to. And um, let's go ahead and I'm going to turn the screen over to you. Ken, how do you want to introduce yourself to people today? Well, I'll do that. It's uh, great to be here, first of all. I wanted to thank you and uh, your team at Metastock for having me. It's uh, certainly interesting to see all the educators, and we've got a lot of good topics to cover today. Quick, um, I'll introduce myself in a second, but let me just ask, can everybody hear and see me okay? And can you see the charts okay? I can hear you, and I can see the charts. I can't see all you. Right. That was one of the questions. You'll be able to see me in a minute. Let's see. Well, let me... Uh, let me share the webcam, and I'm even ready with the webcam. Now, I've got a headset on, which I'm going to take off for cosmetic purposes in just a minute, but I still want to hear you, Jeff. Um, are we ready, and am I ready to go? Yeah, it's all yours. You're on. All right. Well, hey, let's do this. All right. Well, I don't know how many of you are Patriots fans and how many of you are Rams fans. I'm a Patriots fan, uh, but uh, we'll see what, what happens in Super Bowl Sunday coming up tomorrow. I've got some outstanding charts to go over today. And here's an example of my favorite one, which is Kronos Group, C-R-O-N. And we're going to take a look at some very specific breakout patterns uh, and how to trade them with the uh, Metastock charts and do it the right way. So let me introduce myself. First of all, welcome. And you're to be congratulated for being here with the YouTube attention span. A lot of folks are only here for a minute or so. So uh, congratulations for sticking with it. Uh, the best uh, investments in your education and your time. How to trade ETF and stock breakouts with Metastock. I'm Ken Calhoun, president of the original Day Trading University and now TradeMastery.com, which is my big umbrella company. It's always all information for educational use only. To introduce myself, you may have seen my monthly article in Stocks and Commodities magazine. I highly recommend the magazine. I've been a contributor for over a decade. You may have seen me as a featured speaker at the Money Show, Traders Expos. Uh, even back in the days with CBS Market Watch, Day Trading University, that's me. Now, I've got a question for you. How many of you have traded as much as I have lately? I've done just under 5,000 trades in the last four months. And here's PL proof from uh, my brokerage account. I think it's important to learn from people who prove they trade and not just talk about chart patterns. That's kind of one of my things. Let me ask you, when does I kind of make a big deal out of it? But I, there's people who talk about trading. Do you talk the talk, but do you actually walk the walk? How many of you, show of hands, would agree that it's important or beneficial to learn from people that prove they're actually real traders, as opposed to people who just talk about charts? Here's Kronos. I was trading it yesterday. I was in at 2070 out of 2118, so 58 cents on little size. Uh, I trade lots of small size. These are just some of my order confirmations. Oh, from yesterday. See, I prove I trade. How many other people do that? Anyway, my point is I've done as much as 4.9 million. Here's my tax return proof from a little while ago. People are asking me, give me something more current than that. Okay, how about say yesterday? Anyway, I love trading. It's what I live for. I love trading and I like teaching traders. But I want to ask you a question. Do your trading losses make you or your family say, don't? You may have a problem if you conceal your trading losses from your family. Whenever I ask this at my money show events, uh, they get nervous laughter. And if you don't tell your wife or your husband just how much freaking money you've lost, you may have a problem. And I totally agree with my colleague Fausto about you should invest in your training and education. Now, he's one of the good guys. He's been around as long as I have. Uh, don't learn from these YouTube kids who uh, like 20 year old latest uh, day trading gurus. I think you need to learn from those of us who've been around for a while. Anyway, today we're going to look at some of the strongest chart patterns and how to trade them, how to avoid false breakouts. You've probably all been there, done that, got the t-shirt. You get into a trade, it stops you out, and then it runs without you. It really bothers me. So one of the benefits to using Metastock charts is they're especially clear and easy to use. And we're going to look through a bunch of them here in just a second. So that's it for the PowerPoints. Let's get on with it already. All right, so let's take a look at our charts here. One thing that Kronos, C-R-O-N, has in common with some of the very best charts that I like to trade 
is candlestick patterns that have large candles. And what you want to look for is a a group, not only classic candlestick patterns, like my colleague Steve Nissen has brought to the world with uh, things like uh, bullish, uh, say, hammers or bull bullish engulfings or whatnot. One thing that I also often look for is a sequence of increasing large whole row body candles. And if you pull up your Metastock charts and you start zooming in, you just use a plus button, you can zoom in on your charts, you can see a story. Now, name that candle. What kind of candle is that? Does that mean we don't trade? That would be a shooting star, which is a bearish reversal pattern, but it's still worth trading if we're able to take out the 22, okay? So as a trader, one of the things I want you to look for, the single most cri important criteria, if you've traded as many millions of dollars of stocks as I have, and I kid you not, I'm a real trader, uh, the most important thing uh, is not the chart patterns, it's how you manage your P&L on the back end, right? It's trade management. Uh, I'm a big fan of position sizing. Uh, as taught by my colleague Van Tharp, Dr. Van K. Tharp. I'm a big fan of re-entering after you get stopped out. Because oftentimes what will happen, let's say you try and buy a new high and you get stopped out. Have you ever done this? You buy into a new stock. It happens to me daily uh, where you buy in and you get stopped out. But how do you re-enter? And do you re-enter? And a lot of times it's been my experience in training thousands of the world's traders that a lot of people get frustrated and they say, like Homer Simpson, don't. On the count of three, wherever in the world you are, say don't, like Homer Simpson. Indulge me, it's late in the day. We gotta all wake the heck, wake the heck up. On the count of three, say don't. One, two, three, don't. Okay, so I do that when I speak at Money Show. So the point is, what's your re-entry strategy? To avoid false breakouts. I have found consistently in doing tens of thousands of real trades that uh, you want to enter 20 to 30 cents minimum above the obvious resistance. Where traders get into trouble is you draw these pretty horizontal resistance lines and you say, I'll buy the instant, like Kilroy was here, ah, I get over the edge, I'll get in, and then bang, you get stopped out. And then it runs up without you. And you say, dope, there you are. Ask lots of questions today. I'm a big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk. If you're familiar with Gary V and you wanna just crush it, I have signs made up that say, Crush it, baby. Well, what I want you to do is ask lots of questions. When Gary V talks, uh, he's I listen because he's brilliant. Uh, a lot of his public talks, he does a lot of Q&A. So fill up the thing with questions. Got hundreds of you here. I want to answer your questions. I probably had a bit too much coffee, but that's all right. We're here to learn. Here's a really good chart. This one is Marchex order shares. Uh, MCHX, this is a really good pattern here. One thing that you want to look for visually, and I'm a very visual trader, uh, is the per, is kind of the ratio. Uh, my the smallcapscans.com members got this as one of our alerts earlier, the ratio of green to red candles. Now, on the Metastock charts, they pop out brilliantly. I mean, just look at this. What's the ratio of green to red? On the way down, it's mostly red. On the way back up, it's mostly green. What I want you to look for is volume confirmation with large candles at the right side of a pattern here, right? So if you see a cup pattern, what I want you to visually keep your eyes on is what does the volume look like during the breakout? And that's a simple volumetric breakout analysis. I used to be a corporate statistician and quality engineer for the Ford Motor Company, and I miss it. It's a great company. Uh, but the point is, uh, look for volumetric analysis. What, when does a large whole row body green candle, it's a pattern I've taught for decades that's been copied by other people, but look for a large green candle at the right side of a congestion box or a bullish cup, preferably on high volume, and then add, don't just buy blindly above the candle, which would be here, but add you know, a bit. On a three or $4 stock like this guy, you might wanna just add a dime or 15 cents. On a $30 stock, you might wanna add 20, 30 cents but look for the ratio of green to red in your candle patterns, right? Because that will kind of lead you toward the right path in terms of whether or not it's worth taking for a breakout. How about breakouts versus fake outs? Here is Canadian Solar, CSIQ. Now, one thing that you wanna look for is whole number support and resistance. And I always like to sell I always like to tighten up trailing stops the closer we get to nearest whole numbers. And from a 
price action standpoint, and I've trained so many tens of thousands of traders in this, you can see that often you'll see price resistance as you get near a nine or 19, and often it'll stall out shortly near that. So a good trading strategy for trading windows or over time frames, you know, let's take a little zoom back here, is to buy over, say, a day each, trade within windows of 10 point ranges. So like buy somewhere over 10, sell right under the 20. This ran up a little bit further just to fake people out and yesterday it crashes back to earth. So buying the low 10s, like buy 10, 11, $12 a share, scale in on the way up and then tighten up a stop and sell in the high values, right at like the 18 and the 19 price point. That's what I do. Uh, when you're looking for these kind of patterns, you wanna find which charts are most likely to continue up. Here's another one, CHGG. I love these charts because they're so visual. You know, the Metastock charts are world-class in their implementation, their ease of use, uh, and the price action visibility. Let me give you one of the most important tips ever, and that is to make sure that you look, first of all, the overall trend is, is nice and helpful, but the most important thing from a money management standpoint as an active trader, as a guy who's traded millions of dollars worth of stocks and ETFs, I will tell you is the point range on the right side of the chart is really important. Now that does not translate into you should be trading a pop and drop $1 stock that goes to $3 and then crashes back down to a dollar and some young 20 uh, year old kid in a chat room says, Let's do 5,000 shares and look, I just made $10,000. No, that's a bunch of hogwash. So you don't trade cheap stocks. At least I don't trade under two or $3 stocks in general. I like stocks anywhere from five to 30, 40 a share. Occasionally I'll go a little higher, but what does this chart tell you? It tells you more buyers than sellers. How many of you share the concern that a lot of would be breakout traders have uh, that you're gonna be the bag holder at top, that you'll buy the top and it'll immediately promptly crash. Well, there's warning signs that tell you. Let's take a, let's zoom in, shall we? I love these Metastock charts, they're so clear. Look at that price progression. Imagine if you will, your world famous detective, let's say you're Sherlock Holmes and you've got your Sherlock Holmes cap and you've got, see, I'm here to wake you guys up. I'm kind of the, the last act. So, and you've got your your magnifying glass on the chart, okay? So as my colleague Steve would say, Steve Nissen would say, be a market detective. What do the, what's the price progression of these three candles? It's what I call venti, large, uh, regular, whatever, the op opposite of Starbucks or large, medium, small, or papa bear, mama bear, baby bear. We've got a gravestone doji there. We've got a doji there. We've got a large green candle there. Whenever you see a price progression, a whole real body height progression that stairwise is getting smaller, that means buyers are running out of steam. And it would be a stupid blank uh, idea to buy it right there, okay? So if you see a progression where it's, uh, so my, my tip, my trading tip is, look to see what's going on at the, price, at the point in which so something breaks resistance. If it's doing so on a doji, the shadow at the top, probably not a good time to buy there, Sparky. But if you got a whole real body candle in your uh, in your hip pocket that's got a lot of range to it, and especially a lot of oh, that would be volume, volume and volatility, a lot of volume, that would make for a good entry. So that's how you'd avoid false breakout, not once but twice on this chart. Okay, if you see a decline or visually just on your Metastock charts, I want you to visually look for a stepwise either increase in whole row body heights to buy, especially on high volume, uh, or a decrease in whole row body heights of the candles, which tells you to stay clear. It's a stinker, all right? And it's gonna go against you, and it's gonna go downtown, Charlie Brown, and you're in trouble. So what you wanna do as a trader is make sure you're looking for technical clues. One thing to be on the lookout for, it's kind of like two, line, two hash marks like this. You want a convergence of price and volume increase. On your Metastock charts, I want eyes at the bottom of volume. Always be checking traders vote with volume, all right? Traders vote with volume. So when the volume's increasing, you may see my article in technical analysis of stocks and commodities on this technique, 
And it's a great one. Hey, be sure to subscribe to Stocks and Commodities and subscribe to Metastock because they're both world, world class what they do. Uh, and try some of us educators out too. Uh, like uh, like Fausto and others have said, and I completely agree, it's much smarter to spend some money on your education than it is to let the market blow up your trading account. I mean, money's better spent on, you know, spread it around, try a handful of us and see who's the best fit for you. That's the right thing to do, right? We're not all gonna be everybody's cup of tea uh, and that's fine, but do invest in education and training. And I thank you all for being here. Anyway, the point is in my article, I mentioned if you see three volume increase days in a row, volume bars increasing three days in a row and price actions going up three days in a row. In our current volatile markets, you've absolutely positively got to have sequential volume and price increase because otherwise you're gonna get whipsawed, right? And it's gonna be frustrating. Lots of questions. Uh, thanks, Gloria is saying I'm very funny, nice. Thank you, I appreciate that. I've had lots of coffee. I drink lots of coffee. The wife went out and got me some Starbucks cold brew. So I'm a caffeinated Ken which is a good Ken. I, I drink lots of coffee. I used to live in Honolulu uh, and I day traded. I founded a day trading university back in 99 uh, from Hawaii and that's like 3.30 in the morning. So you need a lot of coffee to be awake. My wife's from Japan. So uh, if you're ever in Japan, the stock market opens at 11.30 at night. So coffee is a trader's friend as is world-class resources like Metastock and the add-ons from the different education partners. I need to come up with one, but I'm too busy. But Anyway, the point is, look for those kind of price clues. You know, be a market detective on the magnifying glass, right? What you don't want to do is is uh, trade too aggressively the wrong way. One thing, um, let's take a look at the best of the gold stocks out there, shall we? And I just found this one for you guys scanning yesterday. and it's called KL. Now I used to trade ABX. Anyone else trade Barrick? It is no more, sadly, it got acquired. I used to trade ABX and Newman, NEM were my two favorite gold instruments and JNUG and, and the rest of it. But anyway, this is the best gold stock. Now it's odd, I find it odd as a market detective, the gold is going up with the stock market going up. I am therefore suspicious. I'm a deeply cynical bugger, right? I've been burned so many thousands of times by bad trades. I've made every mistake in the book and then invented a bunch that, that you know, or found a bunch of new ways to screw up my trades. Uh, I've done, like I said, close to 5,000 trades in the last four months alone. And I've been trading since 1999. So I've made every mistake in the book uh, and proudly have the, the stop losses to show it. The difference between those and all my winning trades is what is the basis of my education business and why I've got so many thousands of members and then the rest of it. The point is, keep an eye on KL, right? New market gold. Let's zoom in on our Metastock charts and see what this technical story is, shall we? And ask me some tough questions. Hit me with your best shot. It's been about a year and a half since I've done a webinar for Metastock and I certainly appreciate the opportunity. And while I'm saying that, before I forget, uh, let's all give a round of applause or at least a, a nod of the hat to Jeff Gibby, who is one of the best guys in the industry. He works his butt off on behalf of Metastock. If I owned a charting software company and I told him this, I'd try and hire him away because he's great. Anyway, uh, thanks to Jeff for all the hard work and getting all of us kind of like uh, herding wild cats, getting all of us educators together and getting our schedules lined up and getting all you folks invited. So thank you for being here. I digress. Story of my life. Anyway, back to KL. What's it tell you? There's the, now we had a pivot, but we didn't see a hammer. It wasn't hammer time. We can't sing ba 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 dump, ba dump, ba bump. It's hammer time, baby, boom. But we can't say that because there's no hammer and there's no bullish engulfing. There's no candlestick sign whatsoever that a pivot was about to occur. Except Calhoun's large green candle. Look for large blinking green candles. That's what I've been teaching traders for so many years. Large green candles. After all this chop and churn of melted candles is what I call them. Kind of like back when I was dating random women in the tw in my 20s and some of the ladies like things like candlelight and all that kind of crap. But anyway, I digress. So the point is, these are like small melted candles. You don't trade those. You trade a brand new one, right? It's alive. Let's light them up, baby. Boom, flawless. Now let's say you missed that one. I miss good trade setups every single day. 
I do as many as 50 or 60 day trades a day. My broker freaking loves me. Uh, uh, I love the learning that I get out of it because I'm learning the difference. Be a passionate fan of testing and experimentation. As a former corporate statistician and quality engineer at the Ford Motor Company, as a UCLA graduate, as somebody who knows his numbers, test a lot, small, fail small, fail often. That's the key to success in life. Your trading failures should be itty bitty ones. Now, anyway, back to this cup pattern. So if you miss this, that's the setup for bullish cup. But wait, we have a warning sign. Warning, Will Rogers, danger. I like 60s TV shows. Most notably, I dream of Genie and Wild Wild West. Bum, bum, ba, da, da, bum, 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 bum. But wait, we have a shooting star. So it'd be a boneheaded mistake to buy anywhere under the height of that shooting star. So that would be the long trigger at around 2370 or so. We let it shake and bake. Riddle me this, Batman. Where are you going to trail a stop, baby? Let's say you got in at 24. And let's say you added at 27. Let's say you nervously waited to see if it would break the 30. And it did. So you added at 3150. But now you're wondering, where the heck should I get out? Your exits determine your profitability or your loss as an active trader. Am I right? It's not about making your first million. I've done millions in sales. I've been very successful in life. And thank you all who, who've worked with me, I appreciate it. It's not so much making the money, it's keeping the money. That's why I still drive a like a 12 year old Camry that's in perfect shape. I don't buy new cars every couple, three years. Uh, I used to live in Newport Beach uh, in California and it's land of the brand new Mercedes. And if you didn't have the latest Mercedes or BMW, you weren't in the in crowd. Well. I say to heck with that. I live in the Midwest here in Colorado where people are a little more down to earth. So they don't mind if you're driving a decade old Camry. So I don't spend a fortune. I keep I keep what hard earned money I get. Anyway, as a trader, this is the interactive part where you type in an answer. Where would you trail a stop if you're swing trading, say 300 shares? And look how brilliant this Metastock chart is. This is KL, the ticker, answering the question. KL, the ticker. Hey, thanks, Greg. Hey, can you guys hear me okay? Just doing a quick audio. Yeah, Bob Conrad was great. Can you hear me okay? Someone's saying volume isn't great. Frequent day trader, 20 to 40 a day. Yeah, welcome to the club, Chris. The trick is re-entering on things that stop you out. Okay, sounds like audio is okay. Good to hear it. Appreciate it. All right, getting all kinds of answers. Thanks, appreciate it. Wow, lots of questions. Hey, Teresa, about three, asking about three candle de decline. Well, here's one right here. Here's where three candles are declining. So I'd be nervous long, KL. I'll buy it myself if it breaks out over, say, 33 and a half or so. But the most recent three candles are telling me a story of declining price action. And then that's not to say it's not going to keep going up. You know how the market is, right? But things, uh, things do go up and down. So, hey, thanks, Hergen. appreciate it. Let's see, Julie said she traded under the eight-day EMA. That's good, that's smart. I would agree with that. I use SMAs, but a tight a tight EMA is smart. Something between eight and 22 at the most, but eight, eight's good. Personally, I use the whole number. So I would get out if you got, got right under the, say, 31. So 30.8 would be the maximum trailing stop. Uh, I would likely use something a little bit tighter if I, were in, if I were in large size. Say if I were 500 or 700 shares deep in this guy, uh, I do say 3170, so I'd be tight. Tight is right as a trader. But look at the chart. Now, what's it telling us? Let's zoom in on the technical picture. Volume is still strong. It came up out of this congestion box. This is what I call an acceleration ramp, an acceleration ramp. And that's where you have a steady uptrend that then graduates into my favorite chart pattern, which is a 45 degree angle breakout. So it's still really strong and its best days are likely ahead of it, but not without a pause. Now, I don't know how many of you position size or scale in or out. If I were long, say 200 shares, I'd trail a stop at 150 at say 30.8 and the other 50 at maybe 29.50. And I'd scale in if it broke out over 33.50. I'd buy another 100 shares over 33 and a half. An acceleration ramp is we have a steady uptrend that's not really sure what it wants to do, but overall it's gaining ground 
technically it's going higher in its price action and then all of a sudden they get excited you get a 45 degree angle especially good high volume breakout so in your meta stock charts you can see that pattern a steady uptrend that then takes out new highs and i'm sure i've got an article in stocks and commodities magazine on that topic and it's a very good one it's a great breakout pattern here it is back here does everybody see a basic acceleration ramp let's see Let me get just a regular line. Get a free form line here. So you got a steady uptrend. You try and make trading, how to say, so you have a stair-stepping acceleration ramp. And again, the, the tip is at least three to five days uh, needs to have the steady uptrend, minimum a, a trading week or so, three to five days. And then it starts to hockey stick up, okay? Then it goes back into a steady uptrend. Then it hockey sticks up. That's a really good pattern, especially when you've got a big volumetric increase like you see here. All right, so that's one thing that really makes a difference in, in trades to look for emerging breakouts. Now, one thing that, and I'm gonna start answering questions here in just a second. I'm gonna cover uh, uh, ETF arbitrage coming up, TVIX versus SVXY, and then I'm gonna start answering questions. I'll go to the Q&A and a lot of questions. Wow, hundreds of you here and lots of questions. I appreciate it. One thing that you're looking for is make sure that you spend more time on the math of your trades and less time on simplistic chart patterns. You know, simple, strong chart patterns, keep it simple and play the field, okay? I say trade wide, not deep, okay? And that's really important. Make a lot of different trades. Don't overcomplicate your technical analysis as a trader, okay? I'm an expert technical analyst and I'll tell you, You've seen my stocks and commodities articles for the last decade or so. I know the technicals, but yet it's all in service of the money. It's all about the money. On the count of three, say, show me the money. Let me show you some trades from yesterday. When I F up, when I blank up, when I make mistakes, when I make technical errors in my trading, it doesn't cost me much, okay? Let's see. I bought 519, I sold at 479. I took a $40 stop loss on maybe 100 shares of this cheapy TTNNP. The Kronos I bought at 1452, I sold at 1478, made a small win, right? The cost of my being wrong is microscopic. And what that buys for me, again, these are just some, this is not all my trades. I did 32 trades yesterday. This is just a screen cap of some that I thought visually you could see. If you're going to grind your trades out, you want to start off small. And so I start off 50, 100 shares. I may go as deep as 300 shares, but I'm a grinder. I'm not a, I, to use a football analogy, I throw a lot of short passes. I don't throw the big, long swing for the fences, 40-yard, 50-yard pass, and hope that some Hail Mary pass gets caught. Uh, you do that out of, uh, if you're in desperate need of points at the end of a quarter or something, your clock uh, the uh, clock's running down as a football player, but as an active trader, uh, you can't play that. You can't be doing 1,000 or 2,000 shares, taking 600 or $800 stop losses and swinging for the fences. It's much smarter to grind. And this is about as, as tight or as small as grinding gets uh, for day trades, 20 or $40 when I'm wrong. But I do 40 or 50 trades a day, okay? So my goal is to make at least, uh, my my upside goal is anywhere from, five to 800, 1,000 on the up days, and maximum 300 or so on the down days. And so that's kind of my numbers. I'm not doing you know, $10,000 days like some of these kids are pretending to do on YouTube. That's a bunch of hogwash. You're not gonna become the next millionaire cheap stock trader. Hate to break the news to you. You're not gonna be having $3,000 days as a day trader. That's not gonna happen. Now, I've been trading 20 years. There's a lot of people that make a lot of BS out there in theater. The, using demo accounts to try and make it seem as though they're making a fortune. Uh, it's a bunch of hogwash. I call BS. I call, show me your tax return proof, like I show. Uh, you won't see it. So be deeply skeptical about a lot of the stuff you see out there. Now let's take a look at a pattern that I like a lot. Actually, let me answer some uh, Q&A. Let's do some Q&A right quick. A question from Ed, do I combine technical and fundamental analysis? Uh, no, I'm a I'm a very much a momentum uh, technical. I'm a technical P&L driven trader. 
my primary focus in my trading is my money. It's the P&L. Uh, the chart patterns are in service of that. They help qualify the instrument for whether or not it's worth trading based on the dominant trend, the price action, the volume, the trading range. Those are all critically important. Uh, but even more important than all that put together uh, is, hey, if I go long 300 shares and it starts to go against me, where do I get out? That's the most important thing is tight stops. You know, it's uh, it's very true that you, it's stock trading is very much a random walk on Wall Street and you can narrow down the field using some of the different add-ons that are available at Metastock, which is smart. It's a good idea to narrow out of the 7,000 stocks. You want to get down to a list of 10 or 15 uh, or so. Uh, you can certainly try out my live trading room at tradingtheopen.com or my swing trading service at swingscans.com, both under the Trade Mastery uh, trademark umbrella. Uh, but the main thing I want you to get at is qualifying stocks that are worth trading in the first place and then position sizing and trade management on the back end to keep your stops as tight as possible in service of making incremental gains. That's what you want to do as a trader. And learn from those of us who are real traders that have proof that we actually really traded recently. I think that helps. Let's see, do I use Fibonacci extensions? Nope. It's a way to scan for the ramp. Just the two eyes. I haven't found a, at some point in time, by popular demand, I'll, I'll get some kind of uh, add-ons for Metastock developed at some point, but I'm already working 70, 80 hour a week, so that's probably not in the future. Just visually look for it. Well, thanks, DA says, uh, paying attention to a great presentation today after uh, being a renewed fan. Hey, thanks, DA. I'm working hard to get better at what I do. You know, as always, uh, my master's thesis at Cal State Long Beach was in Kaizen by Masaki Amaya. It's about continuous improvement. And I always pay attention. By the way, here's another quick tip. Get You can get some signs made up by various sign makers on eBay. And I'm not selling this stuff. Just make or make up your own. I used to old school write out on Sharpie markers and post-it notes and post them around all my monitors. But I like, I'm a breakout trader. So even though I trade bounces daily in violation of my rule, I try to avoid bounces. I like to trade breakouts. So appreciate that. Here's another sign I had made up. And no, I don't have these for sale. I'm not trying to pitch anything. I just do this for myself. Best charts only. Visual reminders. Even a veteran trader, I overtrade. I love trading. I have a passion for trading. It's, I live for it. Kind of like a video game, but with money instead of points. And it's unlike a Vegas casino, you set the odds. Unlike being pot committed, I play in poker tournaments a lot. Uh, you can't shove all in uh, and then the, the river pairs and you say, oh crap, my ace high flush probably isn't good because somebody's got a full house and say, let me take 80% of my chips back. You can't do that in poker, but you can do that in trading. It's like you, you're getting your trade, it starts to go up and it starts to fade back. You can close out as much of that position as you can, as you want, right? Which is wonderful. So. Trading is not gambling. It's all about the numbers. Uh, let's see. Questions. Do I use market profile analysis? No, I just look through the charts myself. My trading options. I've tested it. In our current market condition, unless you're doing, say, weekly options at the most or trading st strangles or straddles or butterflies, you're likely to get in trouble. So let's see. Any questions? Oh, wow, lots of questions. Wow, I've got so many. Chris is asking, I'm an intraday trader, stocks use MACD, a signal line and volume trend almost exclusively. Can I show a few intradays? I don't have the intraday charts uh, yet uh, set up. So let's see, Karen's asking, how do I select the best stocks to trade every evening for the next day? I just look at the percent gainers on high volume. So percent gainers with high volume, meaning at least a million shares on the day and percent gainers of at least 7 to 10%. Let's see a question from, wow, I'm trying to get to as many of these as I can. If I'm not answering it, repost the question. I'll try and get to it. Uh, Teresa is asking, new trader can I explain the difference between buy stop orders from limit orders, which is what I'm most familiar with and use most often. Well, sure thing. One thing that I do is I, uh, 
I use buy stop order. So let's say I'm looking for a breakout. Let's say in this CALX chart. Here's a good one. CALX. It's it's doing a cup pattern, and it's this is a cup and handle breakout, right? Minor gaps usually continue, and this one did until it didn't, and it came back down. It's making a bullish cup. The way that I use a buy stop, I don't use buy stop orders because if I just use a buy, a buy stop order 1150, uh, I would get filled if it gapped to 16, which I don't want. So I use a buy stop, say 1150, uh, buy stop 1150, limit 1180 or maybe 12. So that way if it gaps up within 1150 or 12, I don't mind buying it there, but I don't buy a huge gap up. So that's why you always use buy stop limit orders. The limit keeps you from overpaying, and that's an important distinction. And they don't charge extra for those orders, so take advantage of them. One strategy I do uh, that I've been testing lately is one triggers the other. So I put in an order, and then simultaneously, once I get the order fill, it puts in a trailing stop. So you may want to test OTO, or one uh, triggers the other OTO orders. And I do that in my live trading room at tradingtheopen.com. Uh, if you want to try that out. And I do live real money trades with PL proof that I show every single trade I take in the live room in front of everybody's astonished eyes. That's why I got one of the biggest trading rooms on the internet in the last 20 years. So, uh, Let's see other questions. Wow, lots of questions. Today trade, don't you have to have at least 25K in your brokerage account? Yeah, so you should start swing trading, you know, or you can do three day trades in a given. I do three trades in about eight minutes, so I'd have a really tough time if I didn't have a, a nice account. But yeah, you do need to have at least 25K. The the great thing about breakout trading is you can try swing trading instead. And I, it, between the two, it's probably much smarter. Again, I'm not making individual recommendations per compliance regulations, but it's usually a smarter idea to start off swing or multi-day trading rather than day trading. Day trading is kind of like the brain surgery of trading. It's uh, You want to start off as a general practitioner uh, trading charts that uh, have slower, steadier uptrends, like this KL chart, right? This guy ran up the last two or three months. Would have been easy to pick off good trades. Here's another one, ACC. What do we notice about this one? starting to break out at all these green candles. One of the reversal signals, by the way, there is no shooting star. This is a bearish engulfing. So that is a sell signal if we lose here. Okay, but the other signal is you see two red candles following an uptrend. I'll often use the two red candles, regardless of whether they exhibit a classic pattern, you know, like a shooting star or bearish. I always, bearish engulfings are very strong. So if you see a bearish engulfing like this, a loss of the 44.50 would be the, actually 44.70 or so would be the, the sell signal. But if you don't see any classic candle patterns, I will often use the momentum signal of two red candles in a row that gets me out of a trade. And that's for intraday as well as on the one minute chart, as well as swing trading on the multi-day. Now, my favorite instrument to day trade is TVIX, and I trade this hundreds of times a month. Uh, it's a very interesting instrument. Uh, it goes up and down a lot, and uh, intraday and for uh, – I don't swing trade this much unless it's just an overnight hold, uh, but TVIX has really spectacular intraday as well as swing trading volatility. And one of the things that you may want to look for is a quick tip is all the inverse ETFs I was calling these guys long back in October, which is why I started trading so aggressively back in October. I started trading TVIX heavily right there uh, because I know that when this guy goes up, it's very volatile. This guy ran from 25 to 50. It over doubled in just a few weeks. Went up, down, up, down, way up to 82 or so, shooting star. And then it crashed and burned, and now it's still in downtrend territory in a bearish upper shadow here. What I'm looking for as an active trader is to start aggressively getting back into the inverse ETFs if they bounce off support here, like the TVIX. I trade instruments like TVIX, SQQQ, SOXS, TZA, 
I've traded in QID, SDS. I've traded them for years. Uh, they go up when the stock market goes down. Let me riddle me this. How many of you think the stock market may be due for a sell-off at some point soon? Now, I thought the market was going to drop a couple of weeks ago. So just goes to show you, uh, and a lot of us, the Wall Street professionals, expected the market to not bounce as far as it's gone. It's gone up for a whole month, right? And so our inverse instruments, thankfully, are now back down at support levels, which make them not only more affordable, uh, but really volatile uh, to trade if the market does go back down sometime soon. Now, the S&P is getting close to the 200 simple moving average line, the 200 SMA, and that's a key resistance area. So uh, the market has broken its way out of correction territory. It's uh, broken to the upside on its downtrend, uh, but uh, it may well go back down again. And if it does, instruments like TVIX are ones I specialize in in the live room. So. A warning, though. TVIX is not for the faint of heart. This is very much kind of you identify yourself more with, say, Indiana Jones. Bum ba dum ba, bum ba bum. An Indiana Jones moment there for the indie fans. But the point is, uh, you want to trade with uh, tight stops on this. Now, TVIX, I my biggest winning day in recent history was a big run up. It was either this candle or this candle day. I think it was, it wasn't, I was trading, I, I trade this daily. I think the biggest winning day was back here or this one. Nice bullish engulfing, or actually that's not a bullish engulfing. Uh, if it were just these two candles, it would be bullish engulfing. Anyway, uh, I did almost a thousand dollar real money trade win profit uh, trading up to a maximum of 300 shares. I started off with 50 shares. I doubled down to 200. I had another 100 on the way up, another 100 on the way up, and then I sold as soon as it started to reverse back down. Uh, and that's for the adventurers, adventurous at heart, uh, not for the faint of heart, but TVIX is a really good, strong momentum breakout play. One thing that you may want to consider is what I call an arbitrage approach. And that's where this is an advanced definitely in the advanced strategy session. But do you notice how SVXY versus, normally I traded TQs versus uh, TVIX, but lately I'm looking at SVXY because it's more closely, it's the exact opposite, okay? And an arbitrage approach, and this is, you know, like, uh, how to say, this is, like Wall Street grade, quanti you know, the quant, the dark pools. Uh, this is the kind of thinking that algorithmic trading programmers use. I should know because I've had a lot of them talk with me. Uh, they do this automatically. We have to do it manually. But one of the things you might want to look at is the relationship between, say, lab U and lab D, or TZA versus TNA, uh, or uh, T triple Q versus S triple Q, or uh, S, uh, the um, the TVIX versus SVXY, they go opposite. So you could go long in one, say long in one on a breakout and long in the other one. And whichever one wins and starts to go up, you scale into. And whichever one goes against you, you scale out of. Uh, that's the only 100% guarantee in the stock market is that the inverse ETFs are 100% or close to 100% correlated with the directional ETFs, or in this case, VIX ETNs. So the point is, start thinking about strategies that can build more consistency into your trades. It's not just about finding hot charts and hot picks and pulling the handle on the Wall Street slot machine and hoping for the best. That's exciting, but that's not consistent. What you wanna look for is consistency or leverage points intelligently. You know, again, I'm a former quality engineer. I'm a certified quality engineer and corporate statistician and real money, multi-million dollar uh, real money trader, uh, I always look for things that give me an edge, that give me consistency, that reduce variability and chance and randomness and start putting more consistency into my trading approach. And this is something I've been pioneering the last couple of months, testing out different strategies, is notice how these are exactly 100%. This goes up, down, little bounce and drop. And this one goes down, up, little drop and then bounce, exact 100% correlation, uh, inverse correlation. So there's gotta be some way to figure out how to make money based on exploiting that relationship, okay? 
And that's what I'm doing for my live room members at www.tradingtheopen.com. But even if you don't join, and I don't care, I'm rich, you can join or not, I don't honestly don't care. Uh, I'll still eat steak and lobster. And I love a good uh, ribeye bone-in steak with a uh, loaded baked potato, asparagus tips, maybe a bit of cheesecake. Uh, I digress. But the point is, as a trader, look for relationships uh, that are perfectly correlated. This is a beautiful thing. There's got to be some way to exploit the inverse relationship between the ETFs, the long and the short. A lot of options traders tell me it's a lot about, uh, similar to a lot of the options hedge strategies as well. We're going to figure it out. So that's one thing that I'm bringing to the table. I think that along with things like the one triggers the other OTO order flow to automate your stops is a really smart approach to trading. Does that start to make sense that there's got to be some way to exploit that leverage, that relationship? I'm still working out the kinks. The problem, of course, is choppy days because uh, this the relationship is unique to ETFs. Uh, and the, of course, there's commodity and currency ETFs, uh, as well as the market ETFs, the uh, market internals like the VIX ETNs, uh, as well as the indice ETFs like spiders and diamonds and Qs and uh, TWM versus UWM or UGAS versus DGAS or uh, UWT versus DWT, the, the oil ETFs. There's gotta be some way to leverage that. And so that's something that I'm, that's my mission this year is to figure out how to do that consistently so I can make a boatload of cash and not have to be an educator anymore. So <laughs> I'm trying to work my way out of the business. I've been doing this 20 years, kind of like the great movie True Lies with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Tom Arnold. And Tom said, I'm tired of being in the van. I've been in the van for 20 years. I've been in the trading van for 20 years, teaching tens of thousands of traders. And while it's been a great ride, uh, I want to trade my way back out of this business. So I'm looking for things like that where I can start making significant money instead of small wins in my trade. So if anyone has any thoughts on that, I'd love to hear it. Hey, Greg saying Ken's the most interesting man in the world. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. I'm trying. Not quite there yet, but, you know, this stuff can be dry as F, right? Dry as heck. So uh, I like to keep it interesting and keep it honest. I like to keep it real. My biggest failure is a trader. There's a lot of them. I overtrade. I don't let my winners run. I don't trade large size. That would be my biggest error. Now, not in my error list anymore is I keep really tight stops. I never take big stop losses anymore. So at least I've stopped screwing that up. So my stop losses are all 100% really, really tiny. So that's really important. That's the most important first way to climb your way out of a hole as a trader. Uh, but what I'm looking to do is leverage. And so you know, I leverage my knowledge by running an education business. It's done millions in sales. And I appreciate the loyalty and the long-term 20-year history of this business that I founded. Uh, but more importantly, and for my own peace of mind, my goal is to trade larger size. And I've hired some of the world's top trading coaches, and they all tell me, think about it in terms of units uh, instead of dollars. I can't do that. I think about the money. It's like if you're in Vegas and you got chips, that's why they make chips so you don't think about the dollars. I can't do that. My mind is always focused 100% on the dollars. I'm all about the money. So I'm always thinking about my dollars at risk and I'm not comfortable risking one or $2,000 on a trade. So if anything, that's keeping me from the next level in my own evolution as a trader. Now you, you might find the same thing. Maybe you go from losing trader to break even trader to making you know some somewhat consistent small wins uh, and that's it. And then you become an educator, right? But hopefully uh, you get to a place where you can start to leverage up and feel comfortable with those large multi-thousand share size, five or 10,000 share positions. I'm not there, but that's that's where I need to get better. And thanks, Oregon. I appreciate the ongoing comments about the audio. No one else has them. Hey, uh, James is saying as a trading expert, um, I hard on myself when I exit a position early and end up leaving money on the table. Yeah, watch me in my live room. Like, uh, well, I did correct in the Kronos, right? The CRON, uh, I got the the middle third of it before it dropped, so that was good. Uh, but frequently, I will like um, what was on Western Digital. I was trading, and I got the first initial breakout, but then I left. Uh, it kept going up like 70% more without me. So uh, I do that. I think the one. 
uh, one triggers the other automatic use of trailing stops. Uh, I was testing that out yesterday. Uh, it goes a long ways towards fixing that. So to be continued. Let's see a question from Warwick. Is there a difference between stocks and FX in my trading strategy? Yeah, there's some key differences in Forex. Oh, thanks, Jim. James is saying, I love how it's obvious how he has extensive experience and skills of trading. He seeks to keep getting better and learning more. Ken's on the way to becoming a legend. I hope so. I've worked so hard at this business, uh, and it means a lot to me. And I completely agree with guys like Fausto who say, invest in your education or, or the market will do it for you. And, and you're right. It's smarter to spend some money and some time and be patient with yourself. You know, I've been doing this 20 years, and I'm still learning new stuff every single day. And it sounds like a cliche, but it's absolutely freaking true. For example, in our current markets, in TVIX, the, the right play, the right trade is not to take the first breakout, because that's almost always a fake out. The right trade in TVIX is to buy the pivot after a massive drop, and then it'll do the, the single biggest run up of the day. That's the play. It took me several hundred trades to figure that out. So you're always trying to solve the puzzle and figure out where the math makes sense as an active trader. So. Help that makes sense. I got a few minutes left here. Trader saying, I've heard other instructors say, don't buy stocks less than 25 a share. Did I say buy between five to 25? Yeah, it all depends. I used to always say, and I published it, you can see my stocks and commodities articles. In general, I don't and have not liked stocks under $10 a share because those are the ones I've lost the most money trading. So that's why I don't like them. Uh, but uh, since October, the volatility has been so high in the small caps there are good tradable opportunities. But overall, I still don't like them. I still like stocks. My trading, my bailiwick is the 15 to $40 a share range. That's my favorite range, 15 to 40. I feel like I'm paying on kind of a bit if I'm doing 50, or, and I don't trade Apple or Netflix or Tesla or any of that. I don't trade the FANG or the, what was the MAGA stocks or whatever. I trade usually about the $15 to $40 share range is my comfort zone, as most of these are, right? A lot of these are at least. See any other questions? I think we're about done. Let's see. I buy the Qs. I like the TQs better, Janet, because they've got better volatility. I don't know if hand if it's T triple Q dot K or just T triple Q. Neither. It's T triple Q dot O. Glad I did the instrument search. Anyway. We'll see if that loads up. Anyway, T triple Q. Wait for it. Okay. Actually, I did have it down here. Never mind. I I could see that visually. I already had it. So the mind is the first thing to go. I'm 50. I just turned 55. I can't drive 55. That's why I live in Colorado. We have a 75 mile an hour speed limit on the I-75 there. But anyway, uh, I like the T triple Q because it's got better point range and the percentage range is bigger. So this is one that I trade daily on up days in the market. I will always trade the T triple Q. I used to trade it against TVIX, but the the correlation is starting to unravel a bit. Uh, so it's not as great a exact opposite for an arbitrage play, but T triple Q is what I trade to trade the markets up. And I will day, I don't swing trade it. I sometimes do overnight holds, but I uh, day trade T triple Q and it's it's a good instrument for trading the market to the long side. All right, I'm about over. Game over, dude. I hope that this helped. I'm gonna give you years of experience, 20 years of experience. It's hard to believe I've been doing this for 20 years. I founded Day Trading University, the first university site back in the year 1999. Uh, and I've been really busy ever since, so. And again, and again, sorry to beat a dead horse for those of you who've heard me say this before, but how many of you, it's kind of, if you don't trade from people that prove they trade, you're just taking things on faith from strangers on the internet. And people who talk about charts, maybe like the one-eyed king is the land of, one-eyed man is the, land, is the king in the land of the blind. And so somebody who can talk intelligently about charts 
is better than somebody who can't, but yet the money is a lot more important than the chart. So I think people who actually really trade and I spent 18 grand in commissions the last, uh, the, and most of the, almost all of this is from October. So the last four months I've done close to 5,000 real money trades with the commission load proof to, to show it. Year to date commissions, 4,700. I did 32 trades yesterday. That's the month today to January, February. And year to date, uh, 1,278. So I did over 1,200 trades in the last month. How many other educators can prove they did even a fraction of that? My point is, it helps to learn from people who actually really trade and have itty bitty tight stops. Not these YouTube kids who say, I made $10,000 in a day and I trade 5,000 shares with a $2 stock. And don't do that. Small is right. Small and safe wins the game. So anyway, I hope that helps. Got a couple of freebies for you. I'm not gonna ask for any money. Back, uh, like when I do the money show events, I always say, how many of you agree that somebody's free stuff should prove itself before that person has the right to even think about asking uh, for money? And that's where I'm coming from. So join me for free, see if it works for you. That's a good deal, right? And no BS and no upsells and no $10,000 mastermind crap and all that kind of stuff on the back end. I'm an honest educator. I'm a UCLA graduate. A former corporate trainer. I've got an extensive background. I used to be adjunct faculty for various private universities, as well as being a training and development guy. Uh, I used to run my own training business and do a lot of uh, Fortune 500 training, mostly in quality and process improvement, problem, team-based problem solving, and quality engineering and all the rest of it. Anyway, uh, the free membership area with some cool stuff to download at trademastery.com forward slash join. And the other thing that I encourage you to do is, I used to do these every week, but I got too busy, so now I just do them every month. Uh, you can look at it on my YouTube channel. I got over 10,000 subscribers at youtube.com forward slash trading television, youtube.com slash trading television. You can look at today's broadcast. Uh, we got over 5,500 registered. That's number one in the whole trading industry that I know of. I don't know anyone that's, it took me seven years to get all those people, but I got 5,500 of the world's traders registered for my Saturday, formerly known as Trading Week Ahead, now Trading Month Ahead. Uh, and that's the uh, first Saturday of every month. You can look at today's broadcast on my YouTube channel. I just uploaded it a few minutes ago, a couple hours ago. So it's there and you can register free. So that's what I got. I'm Ken Calhoun coming at you from Colorado, the Colorado Springs. Nice big 4,000 square foot McMansion I'm trying to get cleaned up. Anyway, trademastery.com slash join. That gives you access to a free members area with various videos and PDFs and, and freebies and that kind of stuff. And then free webinars at trademastery.com forward slash free. So I'm gonna wrap it up and turn it back to my friend, Jeff Gibby. And you guys should really be thankful to Jeff for putting this together. I am, because the guy works his butt off. He's a really hard worker, an honest guy and good guy to work from him. I work with and I certainly appreciate his uh, work on behalf of of Metastock. So let me put my headphones back on so I can hear Jeff as we wrap up. And I wanted to wish you all the best, you know, trade small, uh, trade smart, trade often, and let's go get them. So thanks everybody, appreciate it. All right, Ken, just a one question for you. Um, it's come up twice. What's your YouTube site? Oh yeah, it's a YouTube, channel. a trading television. Trading television, so youtube.com slash trading television? Yep, that'll do it. Okay. Okay, very good. That's it. Great job. You had a lot of really good feedback. Uh, probably the most uh, vocal uh, feedback of any of the people today. So good job. Well, thank appreciate, you. It. appreciate it. Well, appreciate your bringing me on board. And uh, it means a lot to me, man. I appreciate your your friendship and being a good guy. And for all of you listening, Metastock's a world class platform, and their support is world class too. I was on the phone with one of the support guys. I don't know if it's because they're, you know, the Midwest, uh, they're very patient and they'll answer all your questions and they don't try and rush you off the phone. So world-class tech support from the Metastock team too, which counts, that's important. So thanks to you guys for doing it right. Harry says he likes your uh, column in Stocks and Commodities too. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, Harry, appreciate it, man. All right.